Today, I am here before you to talk about something really important to me that should be important to you as well, and this is affection. And I have always been a very affectionate person. The emotion landscape I grew up in has always been very warm and affectionate. My family has been even more affectionate than that, and so logically, I am now a very, very affectionate person. And my own grandma used to say how affectionate I was as a kid and how weird that was to see a little kid just run up to everyone and try to hug them and be so happy to see them, even people that I had no idea who they were. And to exemplify this point, I will show you a couple of pictures, but just let me tell you, I hugged everyone. I hugged my family, I hugged my friends, I hugged even random strangers I met. For example, this is a picture of my uncle, who when I was little, I rarely saw, but every single time I saw him, I went up to him and ran up to him and hugged him and tried to tackle him to the ground and was super affectionate towards him. Didn't matter how long it went between seeing him, I was always wanted to hug him. This is a picture of me and my cousin, who I was also very affectionate to, and you can see by the look on his little face that he isn't really digging the whole hugging thing. <laughs> this is a, pic a picture of me and a teacher of mine when I was little, who I, so I was also very affectionate with, and my cousin again, and you can see he just doesn't like hugs that much. And to this day, nor me nor anyone in my family has any idea who this person is or why I went up to her and tried to take a picture with her and hug her. And don't think that this affectionate behavior stopped when I was a little kid. No, I carried this affection with me all the way to Boston University to my life here as a college student. And this is me hugging my friends when I see them and when I say goodbye and sometimes in the middle. And this is another really great example of me hugging my roommates from last year. And there's another indication in this picture why the topic of affection is so important. And that is the little beer emoji that you see in this picture. And it is important because this affection, this this physical touch between friends, between men, is so rare that people attribute it to alcohol. And first I want to define affection. And what I mean by affection is platonic affection, non-romantic physical affection. It can mean hugging your friends and family, showing them that you care about them through hugging them, through embracing them, through touching their hand. And sadly, this affection is often stigmatized and sexualized. It's weird to see two men hugging on the street. And even if you see two men being affectionate towards each other, you attribute it to alcohol, like in that picture. Or affection can be sexualized. For example, if people see a man and a woman hugging on the street, the first thing they think about is that they're a romantic couple. And affection is also really impacted by culture. I am from Mexico, and I come from a culture that is extremely affectionate. And, for example, the social norm over there is when you meet a friend or even a stranger, you kiss them on the cheek, and you show them this basic level of affection. And, to, and my experience in New England has been very different, because when I first came to VU for orientation, I was greeted with cold handshakes, and I <laughs> felt kind of rejected. It felt kind of weird, because... I always tried to lean in to kiss someone, and believe me, this gave way to the most awkward of situations. <laughs> and to further explain how different this affection is between cultures, I want to tell you about a study about Sidney Girard. And in 1966, he sat down in coffee shops and he measured the amount of times that couples and individuals were affectionate towards each other. And what he found was that in Puerto Rico, people showed affection towards each other about 180 times per hour. This is like three times per minute. That's a lot of affection. <laughs> Versus in the mainland USA, where people only were affectionate towards each other two times per hour. In what's supposed to be the same country, there is a vast difference in affection. And this is because of culture. And seeing my experience with, in different cultures and affection levels, it made me think. Is affection actually important? Why do we need it? Why am I standing here before you today to talk about 
affection. And I found that affection is important because of four main points. Affection is essential for healthy development. Affection reduces stress. Affection increases cooperation and performance among individuals or team members. And lastly, affection is the best way to show those you care about that you care about them. Let's start with the first one. In a really interesting experiment from University of Wisconsin, researchers put baby monkeys in either a cage that had a mother figure that was made of soft cloth or a cage that had a mother figure that was made of metal. So soft cloth versus metal. And what they measured was the amount of time that each person, that each monkey, sorry, spent in each cage. And they saw that the baby, this baby monkey spent the most amount of time in the cage with the clothed mother, even though the clothed mother didn't have any food and the metallic mother did have food. This means that affection is really essential for that connection of trust, that we need that affection as much as we need a basic need, which is nourishment. In the second version of the study, they didn't give the baby monkeys a choice, and they put some of them in the clothed mother cage and some of them in the metallic mother cage. And what they did was they made really loud and scary noises randomly, and they saw how the monkeys reacted. And what they saw in the soft cloth uh, condition was that these monkeys ran to the mother figure and were comforted by the touch of the soft cloth versus the monkeys in the cage with the metallic mother figure that when they experienced a loud and scary noise, they had no comfort whatsoever from the metallic mother. So they ran and threw themselves on the ground and screamed in sheer terror because, sorry, because they didn't have anyone to comfort them. They didn't develop this sense of trust that someone would protect them. And this happens with humans too. Baby humans need affection and love and touch to become fully functional trusting individuals. Affection is essential for our development. The second study tells us that affection actually reduces stress, which is amazing because we should engage more affection then. And so what they found out was through numerous studies where they had people hug someone they cared about before experiencing a stressful situation, they found out that people who hugged someone they cared about before experiencing stress had less levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and higher levels of, of oxytocin, which is the love hormone. So basically, people that hugged someone that were affectionate towards someone before experiencing a stressful situation uh, had reduced heart rate, reduced stress levels, and blood rate, and were better at handling the situation. Another great example of how affection reduces stress is with puppy therapy. Why are dogs so cute? And this is my dog from home, by the way. She's adorable. Why are dogs so cute? It's because they're so affectionate towards us. Because when dogs see us walking through Adoy, they immediately run towards us, and they're wagging their tails, and they're being all happy, and they want to lick us, and they want us to pet them, and they need this affection to create a bond with humans. And, for example, BU holds puppy therapy every finals week because this interaction, this affection with dogs reduces our stress levels and makes us better perform at exams. The third point is affection increases cooperation and performance. And in a very, very creative study from researchers from the University of California, Berkeley, they analyzed touch patterns for players from the NBA, and they saw that players that were more affectionate towards one another, that touched each other more, that gave each other more high fives or leaping shoulder bumps or fist bumps, had better performance throughout the season, regardless of their salary or status or their preseason expectations. And what the researchers found out was that touch, this affection, leads to cooperation that leads to better performance. Better performance leads to joy and to more victories, and this joy leads to celebration and more affection between the people, more touch. The last study says that affection is the best way to express love and sympathy. And this is a really weird study because they put uh, at researchers at the University of DePaul 
put participants in front of a life-size dress of mannequin. So you had to pretend you had a person in front of you. And they told them, express certain emotions to this mannequin. When they, what they found out, for example, was that participants expressed guilt through body language. They expressed anger and happiness through facial expressions. But most importantly, they expressed love and sympathy through touch, through affection. They touched the mannequin on the arm or gave it a pat on the back whenever they needed to express these pro-social emotions that are necessary for us to relate to those around us. And so we saw how affection is important and the benefits of affection. But what happens if you're just not a very affectionate person? Well, that's OK. But you can become more affectionate if you want to. And for this, I give the example of two very good friends of mine, Frey and Ashley. There's someone in the crowd. Say hi to them. And they visited me and my family in Mexico this past winter break. And they were super stoked about the trip, but they were also kind of nervous because they knew they would have to greet my friends, strangers to them, with a kiss on the cheek, which is weird for New Englanders. And for example, my friend Ashley told me that the first time, and I saw this, the first time my cousin came up to her and kissed her on the cheek because he was just saying hi to her, she blushed and got super red and embarrassed because she had no idea what to do or how to respond to this, if to lean forward or backward or, ah, it was just weird. But the more she got used to it, the more my two friends got more used to it, they actually began to like it. They began to expect this basic level of affection between complete strangers. And when they came back to New England after the trip, they kind of still expected this behavior from people and just wanted this basic interaction of affection. And so everyone, under the right circumstances, can become more affectionate if they want to. And I want to leave you today with an invitation. An invitation to be more affectionate, to help me spread this affection towards those around us, to hug a friend or a family member, to hug someone that you care about, to show them that you care through touch, through affection, because we saw that it is important, that it is healthy for us, that it, is redu it reduces our stress levels and increases our cooperation and performance, and that it is the best way to express to those we care about that we care about. So be affectionate. Give out hugs, because affection is important. And so, who wants a hug? Thank you.